decide that we got some quality young people. Well, without any, well, Sister Carolyn, I need to mention to you, we have been busy at our school this morning. Yes. We've had a food distribution. We had some folks honestly lining up a little past 3 o'clock this morning. And we had a food distribution that began, uh, the truck arrived about uh, 10 minutes to 8 this morning, and we were handing out food a little bit before 9 o'clock. So some folks were waiting already in line six hours to, uh, before they got their food. And for the most, we, in fact, we ran out of food. We had so many people. Oh, and, my. Uh, we oh might my. have our board member um, that was helping us with that program come in a little bit later. In fact, he just strolled in the door right now. All right. But as he gets ready, we're going to uh, probably introduce our, our other guests, our students, and one student's father is here with us as well. But we have some good news and some not so good news regarding our food distribution. Uh, it doesn't take uh, just a few people to kind of spoil things, and I'll give you a little insight into that later. Okay, we are joined by two young men uh, that we've been very proud of. They've been with us for several years. Uh, Antonio, three. Yes, sir. And I know uh, Ken, two. You've been with us three years. And, and, and Mr. Huddleston, good to have you here. We're pleased to have you join us, of course. Um, I tell you what, Pops, why don't you introduce your son and uh, maybe where he came from to come to our school and talk a little bit about maybe why you selected our institution for uh, the high school years for, for Kean. Well, Kean came from St. Paul, which is a Lutheran school on the uh, northwest side of Flint. And uh, he went to school there through the eighth grade. And uh, we selected that school because of the academics and the way they uh, prepare their kids for the future. So this is one of the main reasons, and we think it's an outstanding school. Now uh, you're referring to inter International or St. Paul's? Okay. International. Camp. Okay, very good. Uh, what was the deciding factor? And we have not chatted, so I'm not sure what you're going to say. Well, one of the main factors was uh, I talked to some of uh, his old coaches, which uh, had uh, kids going to school there. Oh, okay. And uh, they highly recommended the school. We wanted a school that were, where he could uh, interact with the kids and not have uh, bad influences. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. that was one of the reasons why we selected the school. Okay. We thought it was a very good school after looking at it. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Ken, that's a nice introduction. Now, you, of course, uh, came from uh, St. Paul's, as Dad just said. Um, how did you adapt once you got to our school from the St. Paul instruction that you'd been familiar with for eight years? Uh, being with the students, it, it's not difficult at all. You can get along with everybody real well mm -hmm. and real quick. Um, as far as academics, it's no different as long as you study hard and do okay. what you got to do. Do your part and we'll do our part and then we're going to get you through. Okay. Now, I know... Um, Again, with the basketball season coming up, I know you're certainly going to be out for the team. You're, I think, close to 6'2", if you aren't already. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how you anticipate um, the season and what position you might be playing. And the most important thing, to keep you playing, you have to do what? Keep my grades up. And pops, did you hear that? <laughs> yeah. we got to keep them grades up. Okay. All right. I, I encourage you okay. on a regular basis. Okay. Keen, what will you be playing, do you think? Will you be in the center forward? Uh, I'll probably be in the big, big man position. Okay, so all right, very good. Uh, yeah, well, I know you, uh, uh, you know, you're just not six foot two and tall. You have some weight behind you, so we could certainly use you in the, in the key. And uh, let's switch gears a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, with us uh, Antonio Ramirez. Yes, and sir. Antonio, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about, A, where you came from by way of school, and say hi to Mom, okay? She's listening today, I know. I hope so. Okay, yeah. Hi, Lisa. How are you? <laughs> and tell us where you came from, uh, how you've adapted to our school. Maybe talk a little bit about, if you don't mind, your uh, favorite courses, classes. And yeah. and then both of you, I want you to tell me uh, in the next uh, for a couple of seconds um, what your uh, career objective is. I know you're 11th grade. It's so not really too early to start thinking that way. I know you have some feelings about that. And if you've selected a college in your mind that you'd like to go to, we'd like to hear a little bit about that, too. So, Tony, take it away. Uh, well, I came from a Flint Community Schools, known as Flint Central, which was closed last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, being put in an environment where kids don't want to learn, you know what I'm saying, that they, like, 
they're not pushed as much as we are at our school to strive for excellence. You know, mm -hmm. I feel that at our school, you're given that extra chance to, you know, do the best mm -hmm. you can. Mm -hmm. You know, and coming from a front school, it's a big change in curriculum and it's a big change in discipline as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did you how did you learn to abide by the, the discipline and the the desire to, to do better? How did all that come together? I just coming to our school, I just learned that I want to do better. You know that I was at that school, and I wasn't getting any chances that the academy gives me now. Mm -hmm. They give me okay. a lot more chances than okay. I would have at a public school. Favorite subjects? Why don't you touch on that? Uh, I like physics a lot. Do you? Physics okay. Is fun. Is that going to have an influence in your career choice, by yeah, the way? In a way. I want to be an engineer. Well, okay. Excellent. And have you selected maybe a couple of schools you'd consider? Uh, University of Michigan Flint, possibly Kettering. Okay, locally, because we've got a couple of kids yeah. at Kettering now. I think you probably know them. Yeah, so. um, John and um, Jerry Brown Lacey, and uh, I can't think of John's last name. Um, Blanchard. Yeah. Is it like Blanchard or Blanchard? Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Okay, guys, way to go. In fact, uh, Marcus Herring is here. He helped us with that deciding <laughs> name there. Okay. Uh, engineering, what kind? There's a whole bunch of them. Computer engineering. Computer engineering. Yeah. That kept Kettering be a good choice. You've been Flint as well. Way yeah. to go. Um, Ken, now you, let's switch gears. What are you thinking of? Uh, I would like to, uh, if I, ha I have a couple fallback plans, which is a veterinary. Really? Yeah. Okay. I've always, I've li lived with animals about my whole life now, so be something that they're like family so it's something what kind of pets helps. would you have then now uh i have a cat and a couple of dogs okay dad's laughing okay <laughs> <laughs> is, is this a surprise to dad about the veterinary no, he's, no. he's had snakes and oh okay birds and everything. okay <laughs> okay he's a pet lover okay <laughs> right. nothing wrong with that veterinary science uh let's see i think i got one school in mind what might you think of it's the notorious Michigan State oh, I thought so. I thought so. I thought so. Okay. One of our board members was sneezing back there, wasn't he? Or were you just hollering yay? Okay. All right. All right. Dan Smith has arrived. We're going to talk to him in a minute, probably about our food distribution, anything else on his mind. Hey, that's great, guys. Um, favorite teacher's subjects? Where are you? Oh, man. Uh, I would say Spanish. 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 Trump, and I love okay. It. Yeah. Very good. Uh, are you an AP Spanish? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay. A are you an a AP anything? Mm -hmm. Me and Keen are in the same level. Spanish. But okay. I'm not gonna... What's that AP stuff? You know what that means, don't you? Yeah. Tell, tell us. What's that mean? Advanced placement. placement. What's that mean? Uh, to earn college credit. Oh, at, right in high school? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that possible? Yeah. At International Academy of Flint? <laughs> it is possible. <laughs> okay. Wait, go. Folks, we're having a little fun with the kids. Yes, it's possible. We have a series of courses there, and they can, of course, learn dual credit that way. And it's a it's a great advantage to the child, of course, because uh, uh, you know they'll get, don't have to take that course in college. And naturally, financially, if they don't have to take that course, they don't have to pay for it. And pops likes that part, doesn't he? That's a great idea. <laughs> okay, very good. All right, let's uh, let's bring in just for a hot minute, Dan Smith. Would you like to be able to join us here? We'll figure out where you should sit and all that. He's going to walk in front of the camera. Don't let that worry you, camera folks. Uh, Dan, good morning to you. I'm glad your wife let you out today. <laughs> good morning. She, she dropped me off and she's doing some running. So. Okay, very good. Well, I kind of talked a little bit about our food. Uh, in fact, you came in when you you heard my remarks initially about the food distribution yes, we had. And I know where you were this afternoon or this morning in the back parking lot and lining up, what, 48 million cars? Uh, Dan, I've never seen so many people. Well, the, So go ahead and just take it. Last month when we did the food giveaway, I took, kind of took over the parking in the north lot, and uh, we had about 150 cars in the <coughs> north lot last month. And today we filled that car that lot up twice. And they were still lined up going down Oakley Street back towards Grand Traverse. Grand Traverse. Yeah. They were lined up down Grand Traverse to the south to where Grand Traverse splits in the north and south. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say there were easily a total of about uh, 700 to uh, 800 you. cars. And what, what nasty task did we have to do at the, near the end of the, pro of the program? Well, I don't know too much about it, but I do know that uh, I, I called my wife, who was working with you folks, to find out how much food was left to uh, determine how many more we could let in the lot. 
and there was a lot of screaming and hollering. I understand there was an uh, individual that uh, tried to cause some problems. Unfortunately, uh, well, fortunately, we had some folks from the prosecutor's yeah. office there who yeah. called some of their friends from the Flint police who showed up, and when they showed up, the gentleman was gone. But uh, unfortunately, we, there was a small incident this morning, and it was just one of these things that uh, when they're... And, and I'm going to be blunt here. When there's free things, people come out and they start being greedy. There and, you go. And fortunately, 99.9% .9 of the people that we serve are very gracious and very understanding. And they appreciate not only what we're doing, but they appreciate the fact that there are others who are willing to uh, help us do what we do. Yeah. And then one individual, unfortunately, can give a black mark. And it's the first time, to my knowledge, that this has ever happened. And yeah, I hope is. it's the last time. It is. And I was also referencing, you know, you and I ended up walking down Oakley, and we had to tell people that we're out of school. We that talked was, to uh, about 200 cars between the two of us. That was um, that just, it's a shame, you know, they, they've been in line for a while, you know, they're sitting, up, standing in line, sitting in line, and, and we had to say we're out of food, and, you know, they were disappointed. But some uh, indicated, well, thanks for doing this anyway. We, most of them, in fact, said, well, uh, okay, it's uh, understandable. They just drove away. They were obviously they were disappointed, but I think they took it pretty well. And we're, listen, as, as bad as they felt, we felt worse because we had to say no. Well, yeah. and you know, and that's something that we don't like to do no, at the school, no, period. No. I mean, even when parents <coughs> bring a new student to the school and we test them, mm -hmm. and then we, you know, they're used to the student, say, being in sixth grade, but they test at a fourth grade level, mm -hmm. and we say, we can't put your student in the sixth grade. We need to put them in the grade level where they're going to be able to okay. succeed. That's even tough, but today is it was tough because of the fact that we're trying to help people in a different situation. Yeah. There. And yes, we understand that the food bank had some tough yeah. time getting yeah, all the food we needed, but that's yeah. the need that we have. I mean, there's a very, very big need for not only food, but other items in this community. Mm -hmm. And we've stepped up to the plate to try and help, mm -hmm. and we can only do what the resources are. And I'm going to throw this pitch out there why probably going to holler at me, but probably. I want to remind people that when International Academy of Flint or any organization decides to do a food giveaway with the food bank, there is a cost to that for the organization that does it. And if we're not able to find a sponsor, we have an anonymous sponsor who will remain nameless that digs into his own pocket and comes up with the funds. So I'm going to put a, a plea out there now that if there's any organization out there that's thought about sponsoring a food giveaway, but you don't have a place to do it, if you call Art at the school, uh, we will take anybody that wants to help sponsor. And I'm going to tell you, it's my understanding it's $500. Uh, it might be a little more than that, but Art can tell you for sure. And if someone wants to help sponsor to help the community out, give Art a call at the school and uh, we'll make the place available for you. Absolutely. That's our board member, everybody, Dan Smith. He's in charge of our finance committee and also vice president. And he's very, as you can obviously tell, very community oriented. He was there at... 7.30, I think. Uh, got there about 20 to 8. Oh, okay, all right, this morning. And he drove up and said, oh, mercy, <laughs> it's going to be a day. Because he drove up and found already cars well past, almost to Grand Traverse when he got there. So he's very community concerned and interested. And uh, we'd be very glad if there's an organization, church, or uh, any other organization that would like to work with us on that. We gladly will supply the, well, the manpower and, and the facility if you'd like to give us some uh, volunteers as well. We can very gladly work that through with you. Uh, call our school number 600-5000 and just uh, tell, tell them you might want to help with the food bank. I'll tell them to get in touch with me in a heartbeat and uh, we're going to proceed. We'd like to, uh, Board Member Smith, we'd like to have another one of these just before Thanksgiving so we could help some families with that. So, And of course we will be uh, providing our usual Thanksgiving dinner on Thanksgiving Day. More about that in some subsequent meetings that we have with you here on Saturday mornings, but we'll be uh, doing that again this year. Uh, Dan, anything else you want to chat about related to school business or anything you want to share? Just, I, I want to tell the two students that are here, it's nice to see you and your dad. Thanks for coming, yeah, thank supporting yeah, Art and getting a message out about the school. But I guess the only other thing I can say is that uh, when you drive by the school, you're probably going to see some construction work going on. We're in the middle of an uh, energy conservation program, replacing windows and some boilers and everything. And it's something that the school needs to help reduce operational costs so we can put more money back into the classroom. Great. Okay. So the more money we save with utilities, 
the more we can insert in the instructional program. That's correct. And really, still, that's, that's the basis of and it. And we yeah. still have room for students. If you yeah. would like your child to come to our school, call the school and they can arrange the, uh, make all the arrangements for the, come and have your child tested and hopefully enrolled in our school sure. and they can proceed from there with their education. Very good. And we can do that any time of the year, folks. We don't have to wait to the end of uh, what is the traditional semester, like the end of January, somewhere in there. Most schools are on that system. Doesn't matter with us. We'll take the child any time, any time of the year at all. Um, but we are a little reluctant to do that uh, starting in May. You know, that's towards the end of the year. We probably would say, why don't you hang on? But up until, uh, you know, through the holiday here, come on, join us. T take a peek. And even if you're thinking about it, just thinking, what's that school all about? Come on, give us a call. And we'll, uh, we'll take you on that tour, and you can talk with teachers, our, our principals. We have three principals. One's for grades K through 3 then another one for grades 4 through 8, and another one for grades 9 through 12. And we call those folks academic quality controllers. That's all they deal with is academics. They don't deal with discipline. we got a whole separate staff that deals with that. And that's why I think we're doing so well. We really uh, specify who does what task, and they stick right to it like, like, like bubble gum on a underneath the desk, <laughs> come to think of it. Okay. Well, uh, Dan Smith, thank you for being here. Thank your lovely wife, A, for joining us today. She was out distributing food with the rest of us. A uh, lovely lady. We appreciate her. And uh, if you're listening, Debbie, I imagine you are. Thank you personally for that. And also for giving permission to Dan to be on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we just thank you both. You're a great family, and uh, we really appreciate you, sir. The only thing I want to say, Art, is thank you. Thank to all of our volunteers. Oh, yeah, and especially thank you to the food bank for providing yep. what they did. Yep. Okay. All right. Thanks again. Uh, we appreciate that. Of course. Okay. Marcus, have you? Marcus uh, Herring is with us. He's doing our filming for Channel 17. We're on at 6:30 on a Friday night. So on uh, Channel 17, 6:30 p.m., the International Academy of Flint radio program is being filmed for that program. So if you want to see what we look like. Um, uh, and I'm not so sure that's a good idea. <laughs> just turn on that TV and we'll just be grinning at you like I'm doing right now. <laughs> okay. All right, folks. Sister Cameron, we're going to move along, and it's good to see you again today. Did we have a call? Yes, and um, it was from the House of Prayer Missionary Baptist Church. I want to let you know, please invite all of your parents and students out to a coat drive that's going on right now. At 1851 West Carpenter Road, it's a coat drive, and they say we would be pleased to have your students to come over today. Okay, and we're going to bring them coats. What? what no, is they, they, it's a coat. They're giving away coats. They're okay. giving away coats okay. right now as we speak. I'm sorry. For adults like me. Uh, well, you guys are finishing the program. I'm parents off. Parents bring <laughs> the kids. <Okay. laughs> parents bring the kids. 1851 West Carpenter Road. Is House a of Prayer. Form. Thank you. That is such a wonderful offer. Thank you very kindly. Uh, we, uh, in fact, there's a, we've got a third grade young man. I'm going to call him when I get back to school. He couldn't go out to recess the other day. I found out about it yesterday, just Friday. His teacher said, Art, can you help us? Uh, I'm going to call that young man's family. When yes. I get to school in just a few minutes, and maybe they could, they could go there. Do you think that they would be acceptable? They said they're going to keep giving them out until they're all gone. Okay. Yes. Very good. I will call. Thank you, House of Prayer. That yes. is such a super deal. Uh, thanks so very much. We appreciate you. I'm going to call that young man's family and see if they can get him there. And if they can't, I'll go get him. Okay. I'll go get him and bring him over. Okay. okay. Irma Stewart is her name. Okay. Ms. Stewart, thank you. Sister Stewart, thank yes. you very much. So much, so much. We're glad you're listening. You're just a fine Christian lady, and may God bless the church, uh, your pastor, your congregation, and, of course, yourself as well for sharing that. Wonderful. Thank you so very, very much. Okay. All right. We've got a few more minutes left. Um, we've got eight minutes left. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Carolyn. We appreciate that. Um, Pops, let's talk to you a little bit about um, what, what about um, Cain's choice of a... Um, veterinarian as a possibility. Have you influenced in some way in that? Is any of you in your family or have you had experience or desire? I'd like to see how all this forms. Well, basically I discuss an education is one of the most important aspects of life. And everybody needs an education. And I see a lot of young students now. Uh, Dom is the end thing. So 
I encourage my child to get an education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, if he can make a living in life, it, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what uh, mm -hmm. he pursues as long as he's good mm -hmm. at it. And, mm -hmm. uh, quality is one of the most important aspects of mm -hmm. so. What did you did? How did he select the um, veterinarian? Just long since a child, he's loved pets, and it just grew from there. Or did you influence him in some way once you he found out that he liked pets? Well, my discussion with him is find something in life you like to do. Okay. And I asked him. I said, you know, you're old enough now to be deciding what you want to do in life. Mm -hmm. So I think you need to think about it. And I said, lawyers, doctors. These things, they make good money. Okay. So what is it that you want to do? So That's I give him yeah. the opportunity to make decisions for himself. Wonderful. Wonderful. So this is one of the things that uh, I try to work with him with. We talk about a lot of things in life, what's good, what's bad. Sure. So. That's that's the role of a father. So thank you very much, and a mentor, by the way, as well. <clears throat> um, you, now, have you investigated a little bit about the numbers of years to become a, a certified veterinarian? Have you looked into that a little bit? Uh, I have not, but my uh, I guess it would probably be about uh, maybe four to eight years. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Certainly four. You need that bachelor's degree, and then I think you need to take maybe a year or two later. Mm -hmm. uh, I do not know that answer myself. I thought maybe you, you might want to take a look at that on the web and kind of look at see, look up that MSU program, and I think they'll probably lay it out what you need to take the prerequisites and all that. You think you'd go there right out of school, or go to Mott first, or what might you think of? Uh, I'm, I might actually go to Mott. Okay. Just for that. Then, then very carefully make sure the courses you take at Mott. Are going to be concurrent with what what Michigan State, if that's your selected school, offers, so you don't waste time or money. Mm -hmm. So kind of look into that carefully. Have our Miss Thomas give you a hand, and then um, make sure that you are in communication. Do a, do a visit to the school. We'll help you with that. If uh, and I know your dad certainly would as mm -hmm. well. So that's kind of how you begin to prepare. Anthony, we'll switch over to you. What about this engineering thing? Where did this come from? Where, 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 where? where? It's just, a, I just popped up in my head one night when I was on the computer thinking, like, I could turn this into a career. Okay, you know, okay. Knowing how to, how a computer works and how to take one apart and put one back together. Oh, my. So you, you would be, would you become a, a programmer as an engineer? Or, what, or it, do you actually build computers? It works hand in hand with that. Being okay. an engineer means designing all the, I'd say software that a computer needs to run, or okay. using um, electrical components. Electrical engineering comes in with that as well. Okay. Yeah, computer engineering. Who, who influenced you in that? Anybody? You, you were just sitting yeah, there and it popped. I know you said that. There, but I just myself. I okay. Wanna, I just told myself, you know, I want to strive for excellence. Okay. Yeah. Whoa. Mm. That's what I want to do. Strive for ex Sister Carolyn. <laughs> I know. Isn't that something? Yes. Huh? <clears throat> How awesome. That's great. And his. Uh, now, Antonio's mom is, uh, we can't get her on this program. She is so shy. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but, but she works at our school as well, and uh, she works in the kitchen area, and uh, just as dependable as you can imagine. And, uh, Lisa, someday we're going to put you on this radio program somehow, even if you have to call in. But I'm proud of what Antonio is saying. That's what I want to kind of emphasize. Um, and I think, Mother, you must have had some influence in the way he views wanting to become excellent. I know we've done our role in there maybe a little bit too, but thank you, Mom, for um, your diligence with uh, making sure that he goes the right way in life. So that's great to hear. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, we, we often, we didn't rehearse this at all, but uh, would you want to share a, a church family that you, you attend? Are you attending a church of some sort here that you might want to share on the, on the radio? Not at the moment, but okay. I would encourage uh, families to get with it. I am. They're a very good school, and I highly recommend it. Okay. I uh, attend it, uh, some of the sessions over there, and they do keep you informed about what's going on at school okay. through the phone systems and things like that. And I do appreciate that because a lot of times my phone rang, and there's a message that this is happening at the school, or that's mm -hmm. happening at the school, or this went on around the mm -hmm. school. So I love that idea of keeping me informed because I like to know what my child is doing at all times. Okay. Well, I bet we'll see you occasionally during basketball season. Oh, you see me quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> that was I a joke, think. folks, because he goes to him now and his kid don't even play. So. <laughs>
we, we know that uh, he'll, he'll be there then, and we'll have a, a good time saying hi and yes. walking up there and shaking your hand. I usually do that during halftime, so that's great. Thank you. Now, Antonio, you, um, you know, you're you not a ball player, but you have a very significant role with this team. Why don't you share that, buddy? Uh, for the past four years, starting with Coach Matheson, he put me on as a manager. And uh, this past year, I took pictures for the basketball team. Mm -hmm. That's one of my hobbies of mine is photography. And uh, I've recently got trained in first aid, CPR, and AED through the Red Cross. Did my uh, job this summer at Goodwill Industries. You, you did that on your own, didn't you? Yep. Okay. Yeah, Very good. good. And it was something I wanted to do because more people should know how to use that skill. Okay. You know, and Coach Kendall told me this year you know you have a lot of responsibility to you're going to be at every practice now that you know how to perform CPR because yeah. never know who could go person, down. That's you know, true. You know, yeah. so, because we had an incident at our school a while ago, and uh, through the efforts of uh, our defibrillator mm -hmm. and uh, the other phys ed people that were in the gym at the time, uh, that young man went uh, down and we uh, resuscitated him and sent him on to Hurley. Unfortunately, um, he didn't make it after he arrived. He had the child had a congenital heart issue, so we lost uh, just a wonderful kid. Um, but anyway, you know, you bring up a good point here about CPR. We, we're offering that next Thursday. Yep. And we offer that through the courtesy of our great Flint Fire Department. We appreciate them. They're going to be offering that to about 25, 30 of our, I guess, pretty much juniors and seniors. I don't know if are you going to be involved in that, Kane? Do you no, know? I'm sorry, what was it? The f CPR class? Oh, uh, uh, yes, about. Yes. Okay, pl please. You mm -hmm. never know when you can use yes. that. In fact, you might pop in and... Might, I know you have that instruction, Good but you point, might be yeah. able to. Okay, all right. Okay, well, that's being offered actually um, because of uh, our good friend uh, Dwayne Williams. Uh, and I think we know what happened there, and uh, he suggested that that would occur. Well, we've got just a few short minutes. Everybody, thanks for listening to this to us today. Let's see if there's any closing remarks from Keen. Uh, I, I don't have a thought in my head, no. Okay. Dad, you got a little something, something. We appreciate your gems of wisdom uh, and influence that you've been sharing with us all the time. You got a short little something? Get old I yeah. Check him out. I like this guy. I like this guy. I like this guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Tony, Mr. what do you got? You got a little Same something? Mr. Huddleston. Okay. Great school. Great school. It's a big choice. It's a great, it's a great choice. Okay. Thank you. And, and board member Dan Smith? Go State, show Nebraska who's boss. Let's go. <laughs> Boy, this program turns in one direction here. Okay, well, everybody, we've got to get along. We've got to get along. And wherever you are, if you're in a car, if you're walking down the street, if you are swimming in an ocean surrounded by sharks, look at them sharks and say, Woo -wee! That is some kind of school. Bye, everybody.